So one of our burn projects early on, and I'll kind of use this example as, uh, as maybe a lessons learned. Um, we have burned this particular unit probably at least four or five times, or I've burned it at least four or five times now. Uh, but one of the first times, if not the first time we burned it, um, you know, going back to, to what I mentioned earlier, what we had brought, what I had brought over from the suppression side and what my experience was, was to find that water source um, as close to the unit as possible, set up a pump station so we had access to water. Um, ready access to water. Um, on this particular burn, I think we had three or four engines because you know the the entire perimeter was was basically drivable and accessible. We weren't using UTVs at that time. Uh, we just we just didn't have them um, in our inventory to use. So we were using the engines by default, but because of you know, the, the accessibility of the terrain, you know, we could use them no problems anyway. So we started this burn and I was the burn boss and I did not pay enough attention to the weather forecast and I missed a, um, a wind shift associated with a frontal passage that caught us mid burn. Um, a backing fire, a nice backing fire rapidly turned into a head fire. That head fire was going to cross our control lines and go out onto private property. Very bad thing, obviously. So I made the decision at that point. There was no other decision I felt to make, but to try and put the fire out, to just, you know, to to attack, you know, to essentially go into a suppression mode and put this fire out um, using the engines. Uh, so we, we did that um, successfully. And over the course of that um, suppression effort, um, one of my engine bosses called on the radio and basically said, you know, we're down to a quarter tank of water in the engine. And any of you that are familiar with, with engine operations know that, um, that that quarter tank mark is generally where um, the red light goes on and we tell folks at that point, you know, you need to shut operations down and go refill. Well, in this circumstance, if we'd have taken the time to do that, um, the fire would have escaped. It was, it was all or nothing at that point. So I told him just roll on, use your water, uh, do the best you can to put the fire out. And ultimately we knocked it down enough that that engine could go to the pump station that we had set up literally across the road from the burn unit. Uh, we had dammed up a small stream with great effort um, and had a, and put a pump in and therefore you know, our, our access to water was a hundred yards away. There was another, there is another um, swampy area further down the road that we have subsequently, I think, used um, for a pump station. But had we needed to fill up quickly, uh, that pump station would have been too far away. The driving time to get there, to fill, and to get back, the fire would have been outside the unit on the private property and we would have had a bigger problem. So um, we rarely do that anymore. Um, we rarely go to that effort um, to find a water source, to dam the stream up, uh, to put a pump in, to go to all that trouble. Um, we usually find the most convenient source of water and put a pump in there and call it good. Um, again, some of that is because we're using the ATVs instead of the engines. But I'm here to tell you, if we had ATVs on that particular burn and tried to suppress that fire with the ATVs or the UTVs, excuse me, um, it wouldn't have happened. We needed the larger capacity water in the engines to make that happen. 
and the direct and immediate and the continuous attack that we performed. So um, that's, that's one brief story of doing something at the time that, that was of a benefit that we have largely stopped doing. Now we've burned that unit three or four times, like I said, subsequent to that have not had problems, but the unit's the same, the fuels are the same in it, everything is the same, um, except that we're not doing those extra steps anymore that we used to do. So I want to do my due diligence. I want to make sure that I have done everything I can on that project to be successful, to make it a successful burn, a safe burn that everybody walks away from and our objectives are accomplished and everything's good. Um, you know, I'll say, you know, a prescribed fire burn boss, um, depending on, um, not even depending on complexity, just, just you're a burn boss on a low complexity burn, you're a burn boss on a high complexity burn. Um, either way, that burn boss responsibility is probably the highest responsibility that we have in the fire service. Okay. Um, if you think about it, um, the responsibility that falls on, on you as the burn boss, um, there is no fire. And um, if you walk away from a burn, nothing happens. Everybody goes home, nothing happens. Um, however, if you proceed with that burn, all sorts of things are happening as a result of that decision. On the suppression side of things, suppression, I've always regarded suppression as the easier of the two because um, there's a fire start, it's in whatever state it's in when you arrive on the fire and you're taking actions, you're, you're reacting almost to the fire. Uh, you're not making a, a decision on your own to start that fire. So that's a hell of a responsibility. Um, the suppression side of things has obviously a great deal of responsibility. You're, you're operating in an uncontrolled environment. But on the prescribed fire side of things, even though we like to call it prescribed or controlled, uh, the moment you strike that match and get fire on the ground, it essentially becomes an uncontrolled situation because the fire can do things that are outside of your control, outside of prediction, outside of what you have planned for. So I would say in conclusion that you need to be thoughtful in all the things you do. You need to be consistent in all the things you do. You want to build good habits and build good routines and build those good practices and put them into effect. And that is everything from how you conduct a briefing you know, if it's a high complexity project or a routine um, low complexity project, do things the same way. Make sure you're doing things the same way. Um, have that consistency. Pass those lessons and those habits and those routines on to others so that your entire organization is functioning with good practices, good habits, good routines. And as a leader, if you're in a leadership position, uh, you want to pass those down. If you're not in a leadership position, you want to learn from those good leaders. And you want to incorporate those good practices and good routines and good habits into your daily operations. Um, you want to make that thoughtful decision to put that turn signal on every time and not do it out of habit but do it consciously as a good practice.